now, our next speaker is Dr. Patricia Matanjun. She's a food scientist uh, and a lecturer at University of Malaysia, Sabah. And her topic today is R&D and state poten uh, the state revenue potentials for uh, Bornean seaweeds. Okay, thank you, Richard. Uh, let me share my slide. Can you see the slide? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Very clear. Okay. Um, you hold on for a while because I, I tried to convert to slide mode. Um, okay. All right. Can I? Okay. So, um, good evening, everyone, uh, or good morning in some places. I'm Patricia. I have to declare that I am uh, not a chef. I'm a food scientist uh, from University of Malaysia Sabah, and I'm based in Sabah. And what I will be sharing uh, with all of you, it's slightly different from uh, most talk um, today, but I will be uh, uh, talking on the R&D, research and development, and the state revenue potential of um, our local seaweeds. So these are the content of my talk. Seaweeds are marine plants or microalgae, or in Malaysia, we call it bumpai laut. In Indonesia, they call it uh, rumput laut that grow in the ocean, rivers, uh, lakes, and other water bodies. So seaweeds can be classified into three uh, broad groups based on the color, the pigmentation. So there is a red seaweed uh, under the division of rhodophyceae, a brown seaweed under uh, the division of hyophyceae and green seaweed, uh, which is called chlorophyceae. So seaweeds have uh, been used as food for centuries in China, Japan, and Republic of Korea. So in Japan, seaweeds are used as sushi wrapping, seasoning, condiment, and vegetables. In France, uh, seaweeds have been authorized as vegetables and condiments. In the Western countries, the principal uses of these seaweeds are for the hydrocolloids industry to extract carrageenan, alginate, and agar are for thickening and gelling agents. Coastal dwellers in tropical climate, such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam have eaten seaweeds as salad dishes, a soup, jelly, and drinks. In Malaysia, the seaweed flora is fairly rich but most of these are seaweeds are underutilized and their health benefits are unknown. So these seaweeds can be used as an ingredient for the development of functional foods and nutraceuticals. If you can see the picture here, I have is our local seaweed. Uh, it's grown in Sabah. On the left-hand side, is uh, it's called Kapaficus alvarezi, but that's a dry seaweed. And on the right hand side, that's a cup of ficus alvarezi fresh. And at the bottom, if you can see the, the green color uh, seaweed, uh, that's called Colopa lentilifera. Or uh, um, in local, in Sabah, we call it lato. In Philippines, also they call it lato, um, or uh, commonly known as uh, sea grapes. If you look at the whole uh, seaweed industry in Malaysia overall, we actually started off since uh, 1977. So they started planting uh, seaweed in Sabah in 1977. And um, Philippines uh, started earlier in 1971 and followed by uh, Indonesia in 1975. So they started off with this uh, trial stage and we move on to phase two um, commercial production and move on to uh, phase three, uh, whereby we have the uh, small and medium entrepreneur where we have traders, uh, they make chips and uh, they make this uh, semi-refined carrageenan. And we're supposed to reach uh, phase four in 2020 and above, but uh, I think uh, we, are, we are not there yet uh, as a techno-based uh, industry. And why Sabah? Why uh, do we plant um, this seaweed in Sabah besides having a beautiful sea and of course our, our waters are very clean? It's just because uh, Sabah is within this uh, coral triangle, within this world center of uh, marine biodiversity. 
And if you look at this um, uh, major work, carrying and supply, 80% are within the Bim Iaga region. And this is the seaweed that we plant in Sabah. It's called uh, red seaweed, Capaficus alvarezi, commercially known as Yukima cottonai. And um, although it's not red in color, but they do have this uh, pigment called phyroerythrin, which is the uh, uh, red pigment of this uh, seaweed. And they farm in, <clears throat> in Samporna, mainly in Samporna. And uh, they farm it in a few islands. So one of them is like the Bumbum Island. And they use this uh, long line method. And if you can see this picture um, at the bottom, that's the same species, Capaficus alvarezi, but they have uh, different colors. Uh, that's green and the other one is slightly brownish in color. Uh, just to share with you this uh, uh, just published by the Star Metro a few days ago on the 23rd of September, 2021. There's another type of seaweed, we call it Crassila rachami. That is where you extract your agar agar. I think most people, if you have eaten agar agar, means you have eaten seaweed. Because agar agar is extracted mainly from the species Crassila rachami. So currently, uh, this species is being grown at a farm in Amor, uh, Johor. And um, uh, Dr. Adibi uh, from University of Malaya is trying to promote uh, this seaweed in West Malaysia. Here I will just uh, maybe touch on the investment requirement on seaweed farming. I'm not an expert in aquaculture, uh, but I, I would like probably just share with you uh, some data that I got. So if you're interested to know more about farming, uh, cultivating this particular species of seaweed, Capaficus alvarezi. You can get this book uh, by Mardi. Uh, it's called Industry Arumpai Laut Negara. You can actually just buy it online. And this was actually shared by one of the author, uh, Ashar Kasim. And uh, just to share with you, this is from the book, whereby if you were to invest, um, you want to grow this seaweed, in uh, Samporna, because you can grow it in Samporna, Kuna, and Tawau. Um, the capital, how much do you need? Minimum, um, if it's in Samporna, it's only about like 2,000 ringgit. But maximum, it depends how big, you know, the acreage, it can go up as high as 200,000 ringgit. And the production of seaweed, um, minimum, say if it's in Samporna, it's around 0 0.42 tons per hectare per year, or it can go as high as uh, 4. Point it's zero ton uh, per hectare uh, per year. And uh, this is the uh, NPV and also the, uh, the net present value and also the IRR, which is the in internal rate of return. And if you look at um, uh, here, uh, how much is the IRR? If you plant it in some corner, uh, how much is the return you can get on average is around 42%. Uh, in Kunak is around, um, 70, you know, 77, 78 percent. So that's higher. And in Tawau, uh, on average, is around 67 percent. But then again, it all depends. On what are you selling? If you sell just the raw material, just the raw map, just the, the, the fresh seaweed, uh, the dry seaweed, then the value is only around maybe two ringgit, 60 cents to you know, five ringgit per kilo. But if you process them into chips into SRC, into refined carrageenan, the, the value can you know, go as up high as 80 ringgit to 100 ringgit per kilo of uh, food grade. And of course, you can use that as an ingredient to you know, make a more product. And this, uh, I got it from the uh, Saba Fisheries Department. UMS, uh, University of Malaysia Saba, uh, strang on this uh, seaweed research is because we do have uh, ongoing and also uh, completed research projects on seaweeds. I'm talking about the local seaweeds since 1999 until now. So we have like 20 years of experience and also expertise and our research achievement. Uh, we have done quite a, a number of um, innovations, you know, products, and we have won quite a number of uh, national and international level awards. And the facilities we have at the you know, Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition at EMS, we have 26 laboratories. And also we have a pilot plant. And we have published our findings in books and journals, and conference uh, proceedings. 
share on Indie Talk. I will share with you with some of our uh, in-house research and development on Sabah seaweeds, some of our food innovations and cover studies like nutrient symbiotic compound study, as well as using animal model, um, basically in rats model and uh, study in human. Here, I would like to share with you our R&D on the uh, nutrient composition and also the cholesterol lowering properties of this use, uh, seaweeds using animal model. And these were the uh, research objectives. And this were the, uh, it's the same species as Kappa Ficus alvarezi, but it has different strain, um, except for the last photo, that's another type of uh, species of uh, seaweed it's called Ikima denticulatum. Uh, this is found quite a lot also in Sabah, but currently we do not, you know, do not really plant uh, this particular species. But if other places like I think India and also uh, Africa, some African countries, they, they like to plant uh, this particular uh, species, Ikima denticulatum. So what we have in Sabah is mainly uh, Kappa ficus alvarezi, but as you can see, it's the same seaweed, but it has different colors, you know, some red, green, but they are all the same species, but are different um, varieties. Uh, besides the Kappa ficus alvarezi, we also study other uh, types of seaweed, uh, basically tropical seaweeds uh, from the uh, red seaweed, green, and also the brown seaweed. So these are the various uh, seaweed. And some of the seaweed you actually can find uh, in beaches. Um, if you walk maybe in Tanjungaru, you can actually find some sagacin species you know, by the beach. And the results, uh, we have published some work on uh, antioxidant activities and phenolics contained uh, of these eight species of seaweeds from Borneo. So that was like my first paper on um, our Saba seaweeds. And it shows to have a very good um, antioxidant activities as well as its phenolics content. And we've also published our works in an international journal of pharmaceutical and phytopharmacological research on uh, antioxidant activity in these uh, commercial seaweeds of Sabah. And we've also published on the nutrient content uh, of Yukima cotonine, now known as Kappa ficus uh, alvarezi, Colopalentilifera, and also Sagasin polycystin. And we found that these uh, seaweeds actually have very, very high uh, dietary fiber. And besides dietary fiber, um, it also has a very good uh, minerals and trace elements of these seaweeds. And the good thing about uh, this seaweed is that it has a high amount of this potassium, which is uh, basically a very good mineral. But a good thing also with this seaweed is that it has low amount of sodium, which is you know, not so good uh, mineral, that gives you very low uh, sodium to potassium ratio. So this is good because if you were to develop food products, say for a hypertensive patient, somebody uh, with problem with hypertension, then this ingredient will be a very good um, candidate yeah, to make the product. So besides that, uh, we also look into the chemical composition and also the physical chemical properties of uh, the red seaweed. I mentioned just now that we are planting now in Moa, yeah, Johor, Grassland Changi. So this seaweed, um, uh, has shown to have very high dietary fiber. It's around nearly 65% and very, very low in fat. And the sodium potassium ratio is also very low. And uh, this, uh, the physical chemical properties of this seaweed, namely, if you look at this uh, water holding or swelling capacity, were actually comparable to some commercial fiber rich products. So, what does this study suggest that this particular seed could be used as an ingredient to improve the nutritive value and also the texture of uh, functional foods for human consumption? Besides that, we also look into the uh, antioxidant, the hyperlipidemic properties, because antioxidant currently is the buzzword. If you do a study on antioxidant, and if you found that the particular food has, or the particular plant has high antioxidant activities, then uh, there's, there's a lot of things that you, know, you can actually uh, study or use it for. And uh, what we did is that we uh, tested uh, using spread dolly rats, and we found that this uh, particular seaweed does lower your plasma lipid, especially the cholesterol. So um, it's uh, even the bad cholesterol, yeah, LDL. So up to even 30 to 40%. Uh, 
Uh, besides that, we have also published uh, some of the works on the histopathology uh, with Nova Science Publishers uh, in New York. And just to share with you, this is the photomicrograph of the rat's liver after necropsy. And it shows that the, the normal morphology of the liver in normal diet means if you eat uh, just a normal diet or you eat a normal diet, which is uh, seaweed alone, means you are normal. Um, it shows a uh, normal morphology. And if you, uh, the, the other slide shows a uh, normal morphology of liver um, in rats that is actually fed with very high cholesterol and very high fat diet, which is about 20%. But you supplement that um, diet with seaweed. And at that time, we tested in three uh, different seaweed, all from uh, Saba. And it shows to have normal morphology. So what does it, if you, um, on the right-hand side, you can see that this is diet without seaweed, but rats fed with very high cholesterol, high fat diet. And it shows to have severe uh, fatty degeneration. So this seaweed can actually protect. Right? So you can actually see if you, uh, put in your diet with this uh, seaweed, it does protect those, um, uh, those uh, taking very high fat diet and high cholesterol. Uh, besides that, we also look at the, uh, the rat's uh, heart, you know, the um, after necropsy. So it also shows a normal morphology of the myocardial fibers observed in normal and normal with seaweed and also those high cholesterol, high fat diet, no rest, but supplement with this uh, particular seaweed. However, if those diet um, without seaweed means that they take very high fat diet and very high cholesterol diet, um, it shows to have, you know, this uh, fibrosis and thickening of the myocardial fibers. And um, we have also published our work in Journal of Functional Foods. And in conclusion, what it means is that this uh, seaweeds exert a protective effect in mitigating your cardiac, your hepatic uh, and renal kidney abnormalities in cholesterol, fat rich, uh, fat rats. So presence of uh, perhaps maybe the high dietary fiber, especially soluble fiber, and the omega-3 like EPAR and other antioxidant compounds like uh, polyphenols, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, carotenoids, flavonoids, and uh, selenium uh, may uh, probably contribute to this uh, cholesterol lowering and antioxidant efficacy of uh, these seaweeds. We have also done some work on anti-obesity, and we found that it has some um, anti-obesity of this uh, particular brown seaweed, the gas and power system. And perhaps maybe because it does have this uh, particular uh, pigment uh, compound called uh, fucosanthin. And we have also done uh, some work on uh, anti-cancer studies on our local seaweed. And what we did was to look into various extracts from you know, the red seaweed, Capophycus alvarezi, and the brown seaweed, the gas and polysystem in five uh, different cancer cell lines using MPT assay. And we tested in a breast cancer, uh, a liver cancer, a cervical cancer, and also colon cancer. And we tested in uh, using various uh, extracts from these two species of seaweed. And that's uh, my student Shazana, who's doing the work, who did the work. And uh, we hope to publish uh, this finding soon. And we have also done some work on a clinical trial, uh, looking into just a few years back, um, uh, maybe three years back, we started with this uh, project because we have moved on from you know, the chemical study, the nutrient study, we've done uh, all those works and we move on to um, animal model. And now we move on to human subjects. So our first project is to look into the blood pressure lowering effect of a particular species of seaweed in human subjects. And why blood pressure, why hypertension? Because uh, 7.5 million deaths you know, per year is actually caused by hypertension. And what we did was to convert it into powder and we incorporate it into bread and we did all the food analysis sensory. Uh, we test all the you know, compounds, the antioxidant. And finally, uh, what we did was to investigate. Uh, we did a clinical study to investigate the blood pressure lowering. And this uh, particular species, Sagasan so what it does is that it uh, increased the dietary fiber and also the mineral content. 
And the alginates, which is a presence in the seaweed, also include the raw handling property of the bread. And we do not have to add any uh, preservative or not as these are natural antioxidants that enhance shelf life. Um, just to show you the clinical intervention where we did uh, in stage one, uh, the, what they did was they take this seaweed bread for four weeks. And after four weeks um, in group A, it shows to lower the diastolic blood pressure. And after that, we did a washout period and uh, we switch, uh, we switch the group. And this group B will start taking uh, the seaweed bread. And it also shows similar um, findings whereby uh, the diastolic blood pressure is also lower. And just to share with you some of our R&D on food innovations, uh, food product development in this uh, local seaweeds. So at the Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition at UMS, we have uh, developed many, uh, I would say many seaweed base of food and drinks products from our local seaweeds uh, on laboratory scale, small scale, and also pilot plant scale. Pilot plant meaning that um, uh, it's bigger than a lab scale, but it's smaller than industry uh, scale. As you can see in the picture, this is uh, uh, using, you know, this uh, jelly candy uh, using uh, our local seaweed, Capophycus agrosi. And uh, we do have at our faculty a uh, food processing equipment. So if you want to do um, a small, you know, production, we do have like a canning. Um, spray drying, if you want to make powder. So we do have some uh, small uh, food processing equipment that you know, the lecturers or the students can use. And these are just some of the products that uh, we collaborate uh, with a local company in, in Sabah. And one of them, we call it seaweed cracker. So it's similar to like kropok ikan, right? But this, uh, this kropok, it doesn't have ikan, it doesn't have fish, but it has the seaweed. So it's plant-based. Um, uh, so if you're a vegetarian, you can actually take uh, the seaweed cracker. So we've also uh, developed chocolate with this uh, seaweed filling. Um, over the years, um, we have won quite you know, a number of uh, innovation awards for seaweed. I would say maybe around 20 awards, but uh, if include my other colleagues, probably maybe around 30 words. So uh, uh, not only at national levels, we have also compete at international levels uh, in, uh, in Germany. Yeah. And also I think one of the um, award that uh, I would say the, the best award that we, we won you know, over the years is the uh, Platinum Award, uh, special award uh, at the British Invention Show in London. So uh, we managed to, to get this award. And one of the products that we won um, for, um, in this innovation invention competition is a uh, seaweed noodle. So what we did was that it has no artificial coloring. So the coloring comes from the seaweed itself. And we do not have to add any preservatives or additives. It has that unique flavor of seaweed. But besides that, it has this natural blend of minerals like OD, you know, potassium, you know, the calcium, and it has iodine and selenium, and of course, natural antioxidants and also omega-3 fatty acids. And um, UMS, we managed to uh, get uh, seven medals in Germany. And um, among the medals, the seven medals, the three gold medals were actually on uh, our seaweed research. This is another product that we actually won gold medal at uh, Aina in Germany. So it's called Netflix. So what is it? It's just a herbal tea mix, whereby we use this green seaweed of uh, sea grapes, or we call it Colopa lentilifera, or in Sabah, we call it Lato. And uh, we mix with pennyworth and mint. And, um, so it promotes, uh, basically, it has very high antioxidant um, activities. And we have also developed healthy snacks, like healthy noodle snack, you know, using the seaweed, uh, even frozen seaweed tofu, because this particular seaweed, if it's Capophycus alvarezi, it has that natural uh, hydrocolloid, uh, like carrageenan, in the seaweed itself. So it does have, uh, helps to stabilize and gel um, the um, food product. And uh, this is also developed by one of my colleagues. Uh, it's called vegan fish balls. So basically, this is fish balls, but um, without any fish. 
and um, it's basically made from seaweed. And um, there is a trend nowadays, people are going for you know, healthy food or plant-based food. Even KFC is going for zero chicken burgers. So they, I, I would believe there is a market for you know, vegan uh, kind of uh, food. And these are the other products that we developed like the seaweed tapioca chip, the seaweed extruded snack. And this is also another product that uh, we developed. It's called, uh, it's a, a seasoning, but we mix a uh, few types of seaweeds with uh, Moringa oleifera. Moringa is uh, very good because it has very high amount of uh, protein. And we won a few uh, awards, like best award yeah, for our temper at NTE, as well as a special compliment from jury award for the seasoning. And just to show you, that is um, a photo of my PhD students, uh, Natalie, and also Peteng, my master's students um, at that time. So they were involved in this seaweed research. And this is the product that we won at uh, BIS in London. So basically what um, the tempeh is, the, uh, the, the seaweed is actually from the summer. And uh, for that uh, product, we won the Anugrahas Platinum uh, International Invention of the Year Award for Industrial uh, Classification. So uh, we actually uh, collaborate with Adabi for that product. Adabi is one uh, famous uh, food company in Malaysia. And this is the other product that where we develop uh, using brown seaweed. And that's my student's uh, project, Ida, which is tested on pre hypertensive uh, human subjects. And uh, we won silver medal at MTE in 2018. And this is uh, the seaweed extract um, uh, we tested uh, for uh, the anti-cancer um, uh, studies. So that's uh, Shazana. And just to let you know that just uh, recently in April uh, this year, we have signed an MOU with the Australian uh, biotechnology uh, based uh, company uh, through SEU Southeast Asia um, to uh, develop, to develop uh, food products from uh, sea grapes, which is the Colopa lentilifera. So we hope to take off this project soon. Oh, yeah. And what are our uh, future research works? We hope to do more uh, bioactivity studies of other uh, new species of this red, green, and brown. And we're talking about tropical seaweeds. Uh, tropical seaweeds mean seaweeds that grow in tropical countries. They are very different from uh, nori, nori that you find, you know, those Japanese seaweeds. Japanese seaweeds can't grow here. So they are temperate seaweeds. So our seaweeds are different. Uh, basically by taste is different, the compounds are different. So we hope to develop a new uh, more new functional foods. Functional foods means food with health benefits. And that's the trade nowadays. People are now health conscious. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I think more people are going for food that boosts you know, immunity, food that is healthy. So we hope to develop uh, more of those foods. And of course, we try to be best if we can do efficacy study, uh, meaning that we do a clinical trial uh, using uh, human, you know, diet, dietary intervention trials. And uh, what are we looking for? Basically, we're looking for more research fundings because doing research is actually not cheap. Um, uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, costs involved. And uh, of course, we can't rely so much on government grants nowadays. It's not, you know, it's not, yeah, it's, it's not that much anymore. It's getting less and less every year. And we hope to have more uh, university industry strategic partnership. What we're doing with like something like what we did with that Australian firm, whereby we try to you know, work together. Um, we will have some matching grant and we hope that uh, we can work with them uh, with the industry themselves. So we know what does the industry really wants. Yeah? And hopefully to commercialize uh, more of this uh, food innovations uh, from our local seaweeds. So with that, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation of Malaysia, mostly for the Science Fund grants, the uh, Ministry of Higher Education for the FRGS grants, for the ERGS grants, Prof. Suhaimi uh, from the Seed Research Unit in UMS, um, my collaborators from UPM, uh, collaborators from Borneo Marine Research Institute at UMS, the Sabah Fisheries Department, 
my research collaborators from the same faculty, uh, Dr. Ismail, uh, Prof. Chai, uh, Prof. Sharifuddin, uh, now with the SIM, and Dr. Asmadi, Dr. Lee, Dr. Mansur, Dr. Rosni, Dr. Yasmin, Dr. Akmar, and also Dr. Walina, uh, my collaborator, uh, Dr. Tan, who is a medical doctor from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Science, uh, Dr. Fazli with UPHM. He does a lot of work with anti cancer works. Um, our postgraduate students are Mei Kang, Pei Tang, Amanda, Absan, Roy, uh, Suzalina, Aida, Shazana, Natalie for, for their projects on this uh, seaweed research. And last uh, but not least, um, all of the undergraduate students of the Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition, UMS, who were involved with the food product development from this uh, local seaweeds. So with that, uh, thank you very much. And that's all from me. Thank you, Dr. Thank Patricia. That was fantastic. Um, uh, we, we would uh, hold all the questions for you okay. until the end. Right. And, right. No and now, uh, thank you so much again. Okay. Uh, we are, now we, we're going to move.